Well, hello everyone, and welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and today I'm going to give you just a real brief lesson on significant digits and measurements. Now, significant digits are also sometimes called significant figures, or just sig figs for short. So, why do we have significant digits in the first place? Well, well let's look at these three different measurements here. The one on the left is 8 centimeters. The one on the right is 8.0 centimeters and the one on the far right is 8.00 centimeters. So obviously the first measurement is only precise out to the ones place. The next one is precise all the way out to the tens place and the final one is precise all the way out to the hundreds place. So we can see that as we're adding on digits we're showing that a number is more precise. So more digits indicate a more precise measurement. So let's look here then at a ruler for example. Let's figure out Okay, okay, so how many significant digits should I record for a particular measurement? Now the rule is that you're going to record all of the known digits plus one final estimated digit. Another way to think of this is you're going to do one final estimated place. So for example, let's say we have this lovely red paper clip here. So we can see that we have the ones place, the ones place, the ones place. These are all ones place. So we know the 2. So the 2 is the 1's place. So we can clearly see that. But we have to estimate one more. We've got to do a final estimated digit. So in this case, I'm going to estimate, eh, that looks like about 0.3 to me. So I'd write that 2.3 centimeters. But the nice thing is, as I said, that last digit is estimated. So maybe you think it's 2.4 centimeters. That's OK, too because this last digit is estimated. The thing is that we all agreed on the ones place because the ones place was the one that was clearly marked on here. Now on this ruler we have the ones place marked but we also have the tenths place marked. So we can see we got 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, etc. So now, okay, what do I clearly know? Well, I know the two for sure and I know it's 0.3 for sure, but there's a hundredths place that I can estimate. So I'm going to say that looks like about 2.33 centimeters to me. But again, you might say, oh, that's 2.34 or 2.32. That's fine because we all agree on the ones and the tenths, but we're all estimating the hundredths. So again, the rule is you record all of the ones that are clearly marked off of your measurement device plus a final estimated place. So in this case, the ones in the tenths place was clearly marked, so we estimate a hundredths place. And in the first case, the ones place was clearly marked, so we estimated a tenths place. Well, how about then uh, for non-measurements? Maybe you're just given a number and you want to try to figure out how many of those digits are actually significant. Okay, well the first rule says that all the non-zero numbers are significant. So for example, 843. So all of these numbers are significant. So we got 1, 2, 3. So this one has three significant digits, or sig figs. Rule number two says that zeros that are between non-zero numbers are significant. So for example, 307. Well in this case, the zero here in the middle has been sandwiched, sandwiched in between the 3 and the 7. So this is still three significant figures. The three, the zero, and the seven are all significant. Now rule three though says that leading zeros or zeros that are on the left of a number are not significant. So for example, I've got 0 0.0025 here. So leading zeros or leader, zeros on the left of a number are never significant. So these zeros here do not actually add, add anything then to the precision of our measurement. So as we'll see in our lesson on scientific notation, I could actually write that number a completely different way. I could write it 2.5 times 10 to the negative third. So in this case then, you can see that those zeros weren't significant because they don't even show up when I write it in scientific notation. But we'll come back to that though a little more in our lesson on scientific notation. But for now, just know that zeros on the left are not significant. So this is one, two. So this has two significant figures. And the fourth rule says that trailing zeros, or zeros that come after a number on the right, are not significant unless there's a decimal point. 
So that's our big caveat here, unless there's a decimal point. So I've written 250 three different ways here. So the first way, 250. Okay, our rule says that trailing zeros after a number are not significant unless there's a decimal. And this number doesn't have a decimal. So only the two and the five are significant. So this would have two significant figures. So, so this zero here apparently was not was not important. If that zero had been significant, and we wanted to show that it was exactly 250 instead of around 250, well then we should have written it like this with a decimal, because that would have been three significant figures, because now this zero at the end is significant because there's a decimal point. Same thing on this one here on the right. Both of these zeros are on the end, or trailing zeros, but they are significant because there's a decimal point. So we'd have one, two, three, four, because of that decimal point. So this would have four significant figures. So again, zeros on the left are never significant. These are just simply what are called placeholder zeros. But zeros on the right are significant if there's a decimal point. So let's just go through a few quick examples and we'll wrap this up. So how about the number 23.5? How many of those digits do you think are significant? Well, they're all non-zero digits, so they should all be significant. So one, two, three. This would have three significant digits. How about 23.50? Well, our rule number four said that zeros on the end, or what are called trailing zeros, are only significant if there's a decimal. And look, there is a decimal. So this would be one, two, three, four. This would be four significant figures total, or four significant digits. How about 402? Well, this zero has been sandwiched in the middle of two non-zero numbers. So all three of these would be significant too. This would be three sig figs. How about 5200 or 5200? Well, the five and the two obviously are, but the question is, are these zeros on the end? Well, again, the rule says that zeros on the end are not significant unless there's a decimal, and there's no decimal, so these aren't significant. So we would only count that as two significant figures. And, as it, and again, as I alluded to earlier, in our lesson on scientific notation, we'll see why this is, because this number could have been written another way. We could have written it as 5.2 times 10 to the third, and then we clearly see that these zeros on the end, again, are just placeholders. Now how about 0 0.030? Okay, rule number three says that zeros on the left are never significant, so those I'm just gonna mark out. How about zeros on the right, or trailing zeros? Well, those are significant if there's a decimal. And again, it won't matter where the decimal is. So here's the decimal. So as long as there's a decimal anywhere in the number, then all the trailing zeros, or the zeros after a number, are significant. So this would be one, two, or two significant figures. Okay, let's do one more and wrap it up. How about 0 0.0070080? Okay. Well, zeros in the front are never significant, so we cannot count these. We know these zeros that are sandwiched in the middle of the seven and the eight are significant, but how about the zero on the end? Well, the rule says it is significant if there's a decimal anywhere in the number. Oh, and here it is right here. So yeah, this zero is significant, so that would be five significant figures. Well, I hope you found this brief lesson helpful. For more practice problems with significant digits, please come and visit me at getchemistryhelp.com. Thank you.